Hello, I'm Maria Hall Brown, and this is LA Currents. Choreographer Martha Graham said, dance is the hidden language of the soul. Our guests today know that all too well. I'm so delighted to be joined by members of the dance team, the Rolettes, Connor Lundius, and Catherine Elliott. So great to have you guys here. Thank you. All right, straight off the bat, dance team, the Rolettes. I know it was created by this wonderful, wonderful dancer, Chelsea Hill, but what is it and what do you guys do? So we are a dance team made up of women with disabilities, women in wheelchairs, and our main mission is to empower other women and girls with disabilities to live boundlessly and shift perspective through dance. So you were always a dancer? I personally have been a dancer since I was five years old. Um, and then I was injured at the age of 22. My last performance, able-bodied, was just a couple months before my injury. And I found the Rolettes about six months after, and since then I haven't stopped dancing. What was it like to know that there were other women out there that really wanted to do exactly what you were doing and had faced the same sort of, you know, hurdles that you had to face? For me personally, it was just such a strange feeling because our founder Chelsea Hill and I have very similar stories. We both grew up dancing competitively and then were injured and we're kind of like, wait, like what's next? Like I don't want my life to change at all. So it was just really empowering for me to find people out there, women specifically, that have the same like goals in life and the same passion. Catherine, you weren't you didn't actually have an accident. You actually no. had something that, you know, ultimately led to where you are today. Mm -hmm. It was different. So did you have a period of preparation that you knew that eventually you might not be able to walk? Um, so whenever I was nine years old, I was actually um, paralyzed for about two months. And from the time that I was nine to 15, I was healthy and active. I was actually a cheerleader in high school and middle school. And it just kind of came on when I was 15 years old. I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease called transverse myelitis. I don't know what that is. It, it attacks your nervous system, so my body um, attacked itself and it left scar tissue on my spine, so it blocks the signals from my brain to my toes, um, causing paralysis. So how did you find the Rolettes then? Because both of you are not exactly, I mean, now you're in California, but neither of you were originally from California. Mm -hmm. I'm born and raised from Houston, Texas, and... Now I hear the accent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I met a few of the girls at an Abilities Expo, and Chelsea invited me to come to a camp, and two days later I flew out knowing none of the girls, and. Um, I never hung out with anyone in a chair my age and since then it just... It's just really special for us to see the reach and how much we've been able to grow even in the last um, five years. When I first went to the camp there was less than 20 girls and then the next year it grew to almost 40 and then the next year we grew to like over 150 wow. so it's really incredible to just see that there are so many other women out there that share the similar mindset and just want to connect and make friends and share experiences and we're reaching women from 10 different countries around the world so it's incredible has it shifted you inside did it change how you feel about you and you know what you can and cannot do I think it's an, it's an indescribable feeling for sure and especially even just when we're all together the, as a team, the seven of us, we share a bond and share experiences that the general population doesn't understand. So it, you feel tremendously like at ease and comfortable when you're around people who are just like you. Being 15, I, I don't know, I feel like I can be unapologetically myself around these women and it's it's a bond like I've never experienced before and and it really gives me a sense of belonging. The thing that's also really important I would imagine is you know people's perceptions and there are people who despite all their good intentions and despite the fact that they don't want to somehow you know make anyone feel bad for any reason you know there are mistakes that are made so what are some tips and hints and advice that you would give people when they're just hanging out with you that you know, you shouldn't or wouldn't or that doesn't feel good and please try not to because, you know, I'm happy, I'm doing great. So what are some of the things that, 
that you've encountered that you wish maybe people would adjust a little bit? Um, I think some people don't really think before they speak and sometimes they say things that um, can be a little insensitive. We just always say, we, you know, we just want to be treated like everyone else. So if it's not something that you would say to like your sister or your best friend, maybe, maybe don't say it to a wheelchair user. But I think anyone with a disability out there is used to those experiences and those encounters. And for us personally, it's, it's more about creating a, um, a dialogue with like education and knowledge and more of a learning experience for that other person than some sort of like an altercation. Mm -hmm. um, so when it comes to the way that we're treated or the way that people act around us, we just want to be treated and spoken to like everyone else. The idea that not only you're talented and you're able to do these remarkable dances, but that as you've said this a few times now, the empowerment and the awareness and the allowing people to understand that A, they're not alone, and B, that there's limitless potential. I mean, that is a remarkable gift. And as that, do you feel as if you have a responsibility to um, you know, demonstrate that in your everyday life, even when you're not dancing with the Rolettes? <laughs> you look at me, I was waiting for you to answer. Um, <laughs> You're like sisters. I, I just, I really feel like there's this family dynamic happening we here. We are, we, we are a sisterhood and I, you know, I think there are a lot of women out there looking up to us, but we also look up to them so much. Um, we wouldn't be able to do this if it wasn't for the women out there that attend our dance classes and support us and cheer us on at all of our performances. So it really is a, just a giant group of women supporting each other. We wouldn't be who we are without them. And so that just really motivates us and inspires us to keep going and to keep growing. It's really cool because before I met all the girls, I didn't know a wheelchair user that was my age that I could relate to because in rehab, um, there would be like these older men and they're like, oh, like you can connect with him. And I'm like, I have nothing in common with this person um, just because we're both in wheelchairs. But since me and the girls, since we have such a large connection of women in wheelchairs outside of the dance team, I've also gone to like connect with um, girls who have also been diagnosed with transmyelitis. And um, it's a super rare thing. So it's a really cool thing to get to compare each experience because experience yeah. every case is different and um, it's just incredible. I know the pandemic has limited the, the events that you can do but this virtual opportunity that so that is allowing I would imagine you to reach out to an international mm -hmm. audience it'll be really interesting to see what kind of feedback you get from outside of the United States and maybe your invitation to Australia. Uh, you know. So, I've been, are you looking forward to that and how is that working? Are you all in front of a camera at one time or are you doing it separately from your homes? How is it actually practically happening? So, uh, we actually do, every week we're teaching virtual dance classes on Zoom. Uh, myself and Chelsea Hill, our founder, we flip every week and um, I do beginner classes, she does advanced and so we have I'm teaching girls all the way from like 12 to 50 years old oh, wow. every week. So that's really fun for us and, and that happens in our home as well as some of our other little virtual hangouts and girls nights that we host. Um, but our big event of the year, Roll It Experience, is usually held in person and we actually do have girls that travel to Los Angeles internationally just for that. And we're always so grateful for them. But this year it couldn't happen in person and we held everything virtually. If people want more information about the Rolettes, you can find all of our information at rolettesdance.com. You are both absolutely spectacular in every way possible and I am delighted to have had the chance to talk with you.